not everybody's watching every Twins game. They don't have a lot of household names on their team. I think everybody acknowledged how good they were, but when you have the Tigers and the Royals in your division, some people believe the reason this team flirted with 100 wins or had over 100 wins is because they were in a lousy division. But guess what, Yankee fans? You got the Blue Jays and the Baltimore Orioles to beat up on during the court. And Blue the Jays Red lost, Sox. They beat know, up on the Red well, Sox. Well, the Red Sox at least finished above 500. Would the Blue Jays lose 94, 95 games? Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, the Orioles lost you know, 110, 112, whatever. So that kind of balanced itself out. But I think the division the Yankees were in was much better than the division that the Twins were in. Twins 31-35 and 35 against teams over 500. Well, they'd seen, and the Yankees... And uh, they were 70 and 26 against teams under 500. That's the best in right. baseball. So, so they beat so up on the teams that have beat up on. Yeah, and that's that's part of it. But I think most people are basing the Twins as an afterthought because that's what they've been since the Yankees started playing them in 2002 when the Twins got really good again after that spurt back in the early 90s that the Twins have had good teams and the Yankees have squashed them at every turn. Mm -hmm. This is the best Twins team, I think, in a long time. So we'll see. I don't think there's going to be a cakewalk. But as, you know, by 10 a.m. on Friday, the Yankees have to have their roster in. And on, on our broadcast, we've been playing with this all of September because I think it's the most fascinating composition of a roster because of all the next man up things that we've gone through the Yankees. You kind of look at it and go, wow, there's a lot of people that could actually fill a lot of these roles. But now people have come back as well. So uh, let's operate, everybody. Let's have this little exercise now. We operate under the assumption that they'll have 13 pitchers. Now, when I give you the 13 pitchers that I think they'll take, you're going to say, well, maybe they could actually carry 12 and have an extra guy on the bench. Because when you get 13 pitchers, you only have three guys on the bench. And one of those guys has to be the backup catcher, Austin Romine. So you are essentially picking two from a field of players that have really helped you. All right, so let's look at the pitchers. There, to me, there's ten for sure ones, Donna Peter, and tell me if you think I'm wrong. Paxton, Severino, Tanaka. Those are your three starters. That's three. Chapman, Ottavino, Green, Britton, Canely. That's eight. Sabathia and Hap. That's ten. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the five. Or the six pitchers you have to choose either two or three from. So let's say we're, we're choosing three. Cortez, Guerin, Tarpley, David Hell was just activated. I think he's, that's a long shot. Sessa and Loisiga. Here's who I think they're going to go with. Sabathia is there to get out the lefties. So is Hap. So you don't really have to carry Tarpley. So I'm going to eliminate Tarpley. Agreed. And I'm going to eliminate Hale. So now you get three out of Cortez, Guerin, Sessa, and Loisiga. Loisiga is a weapon. He's one. Sessa, I think, is two in case you need a long man in a game that might be a blowout one yes. way or the other. Then it comes down to Cortez and Guerin. I think I take Guerin. Guerin can get people out. Cortez is a guy who's more of a mop-up guy. Well, if you need two mop-up guys in the playoffs, you're in trouble. So yeah, I think your mop-up guy could be Sessa. Yeah, I'm going to lean on you for that, man. My, I, I can't tell you that I know a lot about those. I, I saw Cortez pitch a little bit lately. It didn't seem very impressive to me. So I probably would go with Guerin. But I can't say that a lot of Yankee fans have. You, you don't want to have big outs being gotten by these guys. Right, right. And if you do, then you're in trouble.